Hi all, in this video we are going to see about myasthenia gravis which is a neuromuscular dysfunction. This is a very favorite uh, question in the exams as an essay question. Many important uh, sub questions have also been asked based on this disease. So we will quickly see what is the pathophysiology, what is the treatment, what is or what is the difference between this and other neuromuscular dysfunctions and so on. So first of all, what is myasthenia gravis? Myasthenia gravis is basically an autoimmune disorder which leads to decreased acetylcholine receptors at the motor end plate. See, in order to understand this first concept, we should you should first understand the normal neuromuscular transmission. So see here, once the uh, nerve impulse reaches the presynaptic neuron, what happens? The depolarization will cause opening up of calcium channels. These calcium channels will cause release of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine into the synaptic left. And these acetylcholine will bind on to acetylcholine receptors which are present on this uh, motor end plate. And that is how the depolarization of the muscle membrane takes place. So in this case what happens is there are antibodies formed against these acetylcholine receptors. So thus, th that is why you have, that is the main cause for myasthenia gravis. So we will see more about the etiology of myasthenia gravis. So as I said, it is an autoimmune disorder in which there are, recept uh, there are antibodies against acetylcholine receptors. So because of that, there is decreased acetylcholine receptors at the motor end plate. So wh what do these antibodies do? These antibodies, what they do is, first of all, they cause a complement mediated damage and thereby decrease the number of receptors. Not only that, they block acetylcholine binding. They won't allow, even if there are some receptors, they won't allow acetylcholine to bind to that receptor and accelerate receptor internalization. They will just hide off all the acetylcholine receptors so that even if acetylcholine is released, they cannot bind on to the receptor. So because of this antibody mediated damage, there would be some synaptic changes. So what are these synaptic changes? First of all, the most important change is that there is a decreased acetylcholine receptors as you can see in this image. Second one is the postsynaptic fold are more flattened. So in the previous image, we used to see a lot of folds, no? But in this image, you can see that the postsynaptic folds are flattened. The synaptic cleft <coughs> Is more widened. So these are the synaptic changes that occur because of antibody mediated damage. So as I said in my graphs, the release of acetylcholine is normal but because there are no acetylcholine receptors on which this acetylcholine can bind the response of the muscle will be less and it will be progressively weaker with repeated use. And this condition is often associated with thymoma or thymic hyperplasia. The gland thymus is usually found to be hyper, uh, there is hyperplasia of thy thymus in most of the conditions. So that might be one etiology of why these antibodies are present. So now we will see the symptoms of myasthenia gravis. See, as I said, the here the main problem is that the muscle cannot respond because there are no acetylcholine receptors. So naturally the muscle cannot contract properly and this will this symptom will uh, will be first seen in these eyelid muscles. So what happens is after some time there would be drooping of eyelids. So in the morning the person might be fine but as the day progresses there might be drooping of eyelids. These, these would be in the initial stages. Uh, the person will generally complain of increased fatigability and as the disease progresses even the proximal muscles may be involved which may make the, make it difficult to do even daily normal uh, activities. So that is the major symptoms of myasthenia gravis that is fatigability which increases with activity and, and improves with rest. So if the patient takes rest then the symptoms might be decreased. It is on repeated use that the symptoms aggravate. And usually, as I said, the early symptoms are ptosis and diplopia. Later on, even proximal muscles can be involved. And if there is respiratory muscles, muscle involvement, it might be fatal. Now, usually, it is females that are more affected than males. The ratio is around 3 is to 2. So, how do we investigate such a case? So, one important investigation that we can do is an electromyography. Okay, so in electromyography, we basically stimulate a muscle and when we do this test, we see a decremental response. That is, 
unrepeated stimulations for example in this image you can say that unrepeated stimulus a normal action potential is produced at for each stimuli but in myasthenia gravis with each stimuli you can see that there is a decrease in the response so that is the uh, characteristic finding in EMA, emg in myasthenia gravis there will be a decremental response so how can you manage this condition so first of all we want the uh, here yeah, the problem is the acetylcholine receptors are not there okay so what we can do is whatever acetylcholine is there we can make them more long lasting so that it can bind to whatever acetylcholine receptors are there so one thing we can do is give acetylcholine esterase inhibitors like pyridostigmine and neostigmine stigmine so that the uh, the half life of acetylcholine can increase and it can bind to whatever receptors are present that are present on the motor end plate second uh, treatment option is a thymectomy so that you can decrease this t cell mediated immune response to fight the antibodies you can give immunosuppressants like glucocorticoids and esathioprim and if the condition worsens you can do a plasma pheresis that is remove all the circulating antibodies so remember myasthenia gravis is an important essay and in this essay question you have to look for clues so usually there will be clues like diplopia, difficulty in swallowing, drooping of eyelid, muscle weakness, all which might aggravate towards evening. And uh, the questioner, they might say there, might, there is improvement on administration of new statements. So there will be look out for clues like this in the essay so that you can understand that the question is on myasthenia gravis. So thus, you know the definition, the pathophysiology, symptoms, investigations as well as treatment. Now at this point I would also like to talk about one more neuromuscular junction disorder which is Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome. So in this syndrome, so it's a neuromuscular dysfunction itself. In this the problem is, the see once the motor neuron uh, action potential is there, we know that the calcium has entered through the voltage gated calcium channels. Only then there can be release of acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft. So in this lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome, the problem is there are antibodies against these calcium channels. Okay, so what happens? Calcium is not there. So acetylcholine cannot be released into the synaptic cleft. So that is the pathophysiology of lambert eaton syndrome. So there are autoantibodies against the presynaptic voltage-gated calcium channels. So naturally there is decreased calcium influx, decreased acetylcholine re uh, release. And in this case, the weakness is mainly in the limb muscles. It is the limb muscles that are first affected. So how will you differentiate between the two, Lambert, Eaton and Myasthenic? See, in EMG, there would be an incremental response in case of Lambert, Eaton. Why? See, here the problem is we don't have enough calcium. But if we repeatedly stimulate the neuron or the nerve fiber, sometimes there can be some, the, the amount of calcium may build up so that it can cause release of acetylcholine. So that is why we say it is an incremental response in case of lambert eaton whereas a decremental response in case of myasthenia gravis. So these symptoms for lambert eaton they would improve if stimulated. So that is a major difference. The reason is there will be, be build up of calcium with activity and thereby improve the thing. So I just mentioned it for a completion sake. So I hope this video was useful for you. Thank you.